Okay, well, not too many questions on this project so far. Uh, the one question was, what kind of blade did I use for cutting the bead molding? And this is something I bought from Sears years ago, and I've got a video on specifically making the bead molding. It goes into a little more detail, and I'll put a link on the screen. Uh, one other question is, what kind of wood am I building the cabinet out of? Uh, I think they thought I was using beech. No, I'm using poplar and birch plywood, and I did do a short video on that, and I'll also put a link on the screen. So what I've got done so far is I've divided the cabinet in half because this side of the cabinet is going to be where the plumbing comes through and the sink will be over here. And the other side of the cabinet, I'll drill a few holes in the sides for adjustable shelves and that side will also get a back on it. And I've also been working on the doors and they're just about finished. And the way I built these doors was I used a piece of half inch plywood and basically banded the edge with three quarter by two inch poplar stock. And the first step was to attach the bottom and the top piece, let that dry, and then I attached the two sides. And as you can see, I left it a little bit heavy and I'll trim this flush when I eventually fit the door. I put the doors to the side and I'll come back to them later. And now I'm going to run the molding around the bottom of the cabinet and I'm using a three quarter inch nose and cove molding. I'll start on this side of the cabinet and work my way around. I'll be able to make all of the cuts with the saw facing in the same direction simply by making the first cut with the molding upside down. Make a mark at the top of the molding and I'm ready for the next cut. On this little inside piece, this is the piece of molding I want, so I'll put my mark on this side of the fence. You have to keep an eye out because these pieces will often fly and land on the floor somewhere. Now if I still want to make all of my cuts without changing the angle of the saw, I'll have to hold this piece of molding on the other side of the fence. And I should point out that I've made another sacrificial fence for my sliding compound miter saw to use on all of the straight cuts. No nails and just a little bit of glue on this inside miter, this small little piece. And then it gets sandwiched in by the next piece and I'll nail that to the leg. A wet paintbrush works good for removing any of the wood glue before it gets a chance to set up. I just finished wrapping the bottom of the cabinet with the nose and cove molding and now I'm going to do the same thing at the top of the cabinet but I've switched moldings and now I'm using something called an OG molding and this is generally used on the top of a baseboard like a base cap but really just like any molding you can use it for whatever the design calls for and in this case I didn't want a very heavy molding on the top so I think that this will work perfect.
I finished trimming out the bottom and the top of the cabinet and I've started to rough fit the doors. The next step is to cut out the mortises for the hinges. Well, it's a new day, the doors are hung, and now I'm moving on to drilling for the adjustable shelves. And I always make my own jig for drilling for the adjustable shelves, and it's basically just a piece of hardwood that I've drilled a quarter inch hole every inch using the drill press. And now I'll clamp it to the inside of the cabinet, and then I can drill the holes. I'll use a spacer so the adjustable shelf pins aren't too close to the front of the cabinet. Now that the holes are drilled for the adjustable shelves, I've moved on to making molding for inside the flat panels. And the first step was to rip a few pieces of poplar at an inch and three quarters, and then change the angle of the table saw blade to eight degrees, move the fence in to five sixteenths, and then run the material back through the saw. Well, the only problem with making molding like this is you're going to end up with a lot of saw blade marks on the molding and they'll be hard to sand out and it'll take a lot of time also. So there's a way to get around that and I've shown this before but in case you missed that video, uh, I'll show you again. So the first thing to do is cut the molding a quarter inch oversized because you'll need to rip an eighth of an inch off of each edge. And the reason for that is you'll take the molding now, flip it over and trim an eighth of an inch off of this side giving you a right angle and then flip the molding around bring the table saw fence in another eighth of an inch and rip an eighth of an inch off of this side giving you a right angle on this side and now you have the factory finished side facing up and the side with all the saw blade marks facing down Well, I've just about finished the cabinet. Uh, there is still a decent amount of work to do. There's a good amount of sanding. I'll have to finish the inside. And the cabinet is going to be painted with an antique finish. And I'll talk about that when I show you the cabinet next. Now, next week, I hope to be working on the top, which will be solid cherry. And maybe I'll even finish that and get a chance to set the sink. So I hope you'll tune in. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, Please subscribe and like me on Facebook or share the video. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.